What's up, Portland? How's it going? Good to be back. I walked around and found a bunch of vegan food. Didn't even try. I went into a place and it was like straight up a bar and I was like, there's food in here? And they were like, yeah, it's all vegan. I was like, this is messed up. Like, you, like I know this about you guys, but I forget sometimes. Because I go other places in the country and they're like, what's that? And I'm like, right, you guys don't know what vegan is at all. And then Portland's like, what's not vegan? That's weird. <laughs> and I was walking to this vegan bar and I, there was just a straight up butt plug on the ground. <laughs> Like, well-worn, too. You know what I mean? Like, like, like it's seen some shit, you know? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you guys ever feel like maybe you, like, healed too much? <laughs> Anybody got that problem going on? Feeling too good on the inside, you know? No, just me? Okay, well, <laughs> I'll tell you why I feel that way. Uh, it's because I enjoy... Flying Spirit Airlines. I like it. You're concerned, I can tell. People are worried. I, look, I'm like trying to get my friends on board. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm like a pyramid scheme. I'm an MLM. Like, you would think they're paying me. They can't. They have no money to do that. So don't worry about it. <laughs> like, I'm not owned by Spirit. Spirit's not even owned by Spirit. <laughs> like, I understand. Because I took my first spirit flight, I got off of that thing and I was like, never again! Like, <laughs> like I just went to wars. I'm like, I'll never be on a plane like that again! But then I looked back and I realized that I paid 65 American dollars. <laughs> Three 20s and a five. Like, I can't even fill up my car for that. And I paid 65 American dollars to get on an airplane? And then that airplane got in the sky. <laughs> and it took me where I wanted to go, which was another place entirely. And then I got off of that flight and I was like, it didn't have televisions! <laughs> For $65! How dare you have expectations? For $65? That changed my whole vibe after that. Then I was like, oh, I see. Because that's the thing. Somebody's like, someone screamed at me when I said I, I love Spirit Airlines. They're like, they charge you for water. <laughs> I was like, so does everywhere. <laughs> like, like Delta Airlines has a water fountain on the plane. <laughs> I like Spirit Airlines because everybody is on the same page on that flight. If somebody was a millionaire on a Spirit Airlines flight, you would not know. Because like, <laughs> half the flight doesn't even have shoes, you know? <laughs> and like, like, it's not necessarily a poverty thing, it's like, I can get through TSA faster <laughs> if I don't have these <laughs> shoes on, you know? And I'm saving so much money on this flight, I'll, I'll just buy them on the other end, I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, I don't care. I want some new shoes anyways, so. <laughs> A lot of one-way flights on Spirit Airlines, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of returns. <laughs> Very innovative luggage on those flights, too, because you can only take one small item, you know? <laughs> so oftentimes, it's just like a bunch of CVS bags, you know, just sort of. One time I saw a guy, uh, and his luggage consisted of two igloo coolers. <laughs> stacked on top of each other and then bungeed together. <laughs> oh, and then bungeed to a hand cart. Because you gotta have that mobility going, you know what I mean? And then tastefully, he draped a tarp over it, you know? <laughs> to sort of pull the number together, you know what I mean? <laughs> Make it one cohesive item, you know? Now this is what I love about Spirit Airlines. He rolled that sucker up to the, to the gate agent. <laughs> and she was like, sir, would you mind um, lifting up the flap? he did and she looked in and she was like okay you're good to go get on in there <laughs> that's what I love about Spirit Airlines the mystery what was or was not inside that igloo cooler 
Like, oh, dead cat, get on in there. <laughs> Is that your emotional support animal? <laughs> I mean, I, look, I like Spirit Airlines because I enjoy, you know, packing my underwear inside my jacket, you know? <laughs> I used to drink a lot. I did that a lot. You guys, this is a progressive place, you know? I would imagine that most of you guys are pretty progressive and you, you wish for a, an equal future. You wish for a utopia where everybody has all their needs met, you know, and we live as one. Exactly. Guess what it's going to look like? Spirit Airlines. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, it is going to look similar to that. I, I will dream big, but you're going to have to spend some time with people you don't want to. In very close quarters. And all there is to eat is Pringles. So it's going to happen every now and then, you know? <laughs> I do think capitalism is ending. Spirit Airlines being one of the harbingers. <laughs> Wow, I'm glad you guys are on board with this. Oftentimes people are like, no, and then they kick a little rock in front of their table. <laughs> I do that every night before my shows. I place a little rock in front of every table. <laughs> so that everyone who doesn't believe can go, no. I'm glad you guys are on board. I think we are at least, I mean, I don't know if we'll see the end of it in our lifetime. I hope so. That would be awesome. You know, that would be incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, vegan bars, Portland, you know. I do think it's gonna, it's like the beginning of the end, you know? We're like, we're, we're, we're in the third act, or you know, all that. We're coming to an end, I think. And uh, I'm gonna give you a couple reasons, and I'm not gonna give you any real reasons, because A, you guys already know that. You listen to NPR and shit here. <laughs> I feel like Portland is if Canada was a city in the United States. And I feel like Canada is a country that if PBS was the only thing we watched, that's what we would be like, you know? That's, it's like the US if we watched PBS, you know? The other day, I saw something called an organic weighted blanket. What's that? Why would we need that? I'm okay with GMOs in my weighted blanket. I don't mind. I mean, what are we doing here? My anxiety is free range anyways. It doesn't matter. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> also, this one might be age specific, but I cannot believe that people are buying and driving white Ford Broncos. I just... I just, like... I can't even conceive of that happening. <laughs> like, I was a 12-year-old child, and I was like, never will anyone drive a white Ford Bronco again. <laughs> Certainly that vehicle is dead. <laughs> Absolutely. Never again. And then I turned 40, and I'm like, what the hell? I can't believe it. I truly, I truly cannot believe it. I also, you know those little boxes people have like on the tree in front of their house or like a fence or something in their neighborhood and they put a bunch of books in it, right? Yeah. To like give away? <laughs> yes. What do they put on that? It says, little free library. Every library is free! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Gavin's like, no, no, no. Some libraries are Barnes and Noble. <laughs> you should just go sit there, buy a $7 drink, and try not to shit your pants while you read a book. <laughs> Don't go to the, ooh, library. It's the Spirit Airlines of books. <laughs> Gross. Yucky. <laughs> Here's when I was like, oh, okay. We have, we've truly reached the end. I was in Kansas City. Anybody go to Kansas City? A couple of people. Cool. It's a, I love that city. It's a city in two states at the same time. It's a real bisexual city. <laughs> it's incredible. I love that people are like, America's the greatest country in the world. And, whoops. We put a city in two places at the same time. Never mind. <laughs> Not going to do anything about it, though. We'll just keep everybody confused forever. <laughs> 
So I was in Kansas City, and I saw this building. I was like out, you know, out on the freeway. Saw this building, and uh, I'd seen this before. But you know when like <laughs> you've witnessed something and you've seen it a bunch of times, but then you're like ready to receive it. <laughs> it was my moment. You know, I was like ready. I was ready for this. Drove past this building, and on the side of the building, it said, indoor skydiving. <laughs> you can't do that. That's, you can't put the sky inside. You can't do that. All these right-wing religious freaks, they think we're people that we're against God. <laughs> I'll tell you what's against God. <laughs> Putting the sky inside. And then charging me $250 for it. I don't think so. That is ceiling diving. That is what that is. And what it really is is floating over a fan operated by a guy named Bruce. Now, I asked the audience when I was in Kansas City, I was like, has anybody ever gone indoor skydiving? And this woman, this hero, in the back of the room, stood up. She did have a cowboy hat on. <laughs> Asked the audience, has anybody ever gone indoor skydiving? She stood up and she said, indoor, outdoor, I've done it all! <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? I was not ready for that kind of a reaction. I thought a symbol, yes, I tried it. <laughs> it was maybe coming my way. But no. <laughs> this lady was rip-roaring, ready to go. So I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> Great. Well, all right. Well, I'm curious um, if you've done, you know, indoor and outdoor skydiving. Um, well, which one did you like better? And she thought for a second. She goes, indoor, outdoor, I've done it all. <laughs> now, I am an only child of divorce. <laughs> and so in that moment, I realized, certainly I just didn't ask the question properly. If I would have just phrased this in a way that made more sense to her, I would have gotten the answer I was looking for. And we all would be fine. Everyone would be happier. So, <laughs> thought to myself, and I was like, okay, let me just ask this a different way. All right, let's see if I can get a better result. Okay, all right, well, if I told you you could only do one type of skydiving for the rest of your life, indoor or outdoor, which one would you choose? And she thought for a second, and she goes, indoor, outdoor, I've done it all! <laughs> now, in that moment, I realize that I, a non-binary trans guy, has been trying to force a binary of skydiving thinking on this poor person. <clears throat> that there's only two types of skydiving in the world. <laughs> Indoor and outdoor. And she's clearly told me numerous times she's done it all. <laughs> I can't think beyond that two skydiving binary and think of the third, fourth, fifth, 10,000th version of skydiving we have yet to conceive of or experience. <laughs> And not only am I trying to force a binary of skydiving thinking on this poor person, I'm trying to force a sort of heteronormative, sit-centric type of skydiving wherein there is a binary of two and one is a clear and superior choice. So. <clears throat> I thank that woman for expanding my skydiving thinking. All right, it feels like a safe space. I feel like I could admit something to you guys that's kind of vulnerable for me to admit this, but I feel like I can with you. I feel safe with you. Um, I can't, man, I can't stop watching Top Gun Maverick. It's, <laughs> I know, I know it's a big problem. I don't, it's hard for me. I can't stop watching it, it's been a year. Can't stop watching it, you know? I just, I didn't even want to see that. Also, I was calling that movie Top Gun 2 for a really long time. So, I want to apologize for dead naming Top Gun Maverick. That was <laughs> terrible of me. <laughs> also made me feel really old, you know, to call it Top Gun 2, because most people don't even know that there was a Top Gun, <laughs> you know? Nobody really realizes it's just own movie, you know what I mean? The only time I felt 
older than when I was calling it Top Gun 2 was when I, in a moment of uh, you know vulnerability and, and curiosity, turned um, to my partner who is um, 10 years younger than me. And I mentioned that to let you know um, that I'm awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so I turned to them and I was like, hey, you know, I just, I don't know, I just thought maybe, I'm curious, I don't know, do you, um, do you ever watch um, porno? <laughs> and she laughed in my face, not unlike some of you did just now. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, was that, should I have not, was that too much? I'm so sorry, did I, well, am I a creep, was that weird, do, should I not, and she was like, no, no, not at all. It's just, nobody calls it porno anymore. <laughs> He's used that word for 30 years. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry, that's what I call it, you know? When we were growing up, the only way we could get it was ripped up and in the woods. That shit, <laughs> that shit is porno, you know? Also just wanna say good job for everybody coming out to live comedy. We could all be watching porn right now, you know? <laughs> like literally everyone has a porn device in their pocket as we speak. <laughs> And like, not the future I thought we were gonna have, you know? We have it, I just thought, you know, we could also have universal health care. Like, I believe that, you know what I mean? I think we could have universal health care and universal porn. I think it's possible. <laughs> and I bet the porn would be even better, you know what I mean? The nurses would be a little more into it, I think. So I, look, okay, so I didn't even really want to see Top Gun Maverick. It's not like it was a movie that I couldn't wait to see it when it was in the theaters. Like, it's about things I'm not super into, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not into, like, war and the military or any of that, you know, like, America. <laughs> it's not, like, one of my favorite things. <clears throat> like, not even in my top ten, you know what I mean? And then, you know, anything you're thinking about Tom Cruise, it's like, maybe not <clears throat> for me, you know, whatever. <clears throat> but then... I was having a real rough day, a real stinky day, a real clunker of a day, a real pee-pee-poo-poo -poo day. You ever have one of those? You know, just a real pee-pee-poo-poo -poo day. And you keep trying and you can't get out of it. It's like you're always stuck in second gear, you know? And it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year. This has a real ring to it, you know, I might. <laughs> And I realized I was really down. I was just like, <laughs> feeling it all day. And I realized what I ultimately wanted was to be carried around in an adult-sized baby Bjorn. <laughs> like, I really just wanted to be strapped to another adult on the front, front-facing. I wanted to feel the effects of gravity but not be responsible to it. You know what I mean? Just like feel like I'm in the world but not have any responsibilities whatsoever. Other than just like, ooh, watch out, there's a corner. <laughs> Thank you. You know? Just sort of bounce through life, you know, someone else's life. <laughs> and just have my toes gently drag on the concrete. Just a little bit. So sharks, I'm asking for <laughs> the whole shebang. Can you just make it for me, sharks? <laughs> you make it. <laughs> I think my partner could do it, though. You know, she's about a half inch taller than me, and uh, my girlfriend, she's a real Carhartt they. So I feel like she could really do it. I will. I gotta be honest, though. The way they would like to be described is my boyfriend. She's a real Carhartt they. That's the whole gender spectrum. So you get it. Just, just wear me around like a Krang situation, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so in the absence of that adult-sized baby Bjorn, I, uh, I asked a friend, I, I, I tried to get some advice on like what I should do, you know, to like get myself up out of the dumps, you know? And uh, he was like, I suggest you go down to the movies get a ticket, you go in and you leave your troubles outside. And I was like, okay, Mr. Rogers, I'll give it a try. So I got out my newspaper, called up movie phone. <laughs> and I was like, one. One. 
<laughs> the only movie that was like worth seeing at that time was Top Gun Maverick. So I was like, all right, I guess I got to go see this bad boy. I guess it's you and me, Tom. So I walked myself on down to the movies. I got myself a ticket, got into the theater. I got a little medium popcorn and a medium Mountain Dew because it was a Pepsi theater. It was a real flyover theater. I felt like I was right at home, you know? Because you guys know I'm from Ohio originally, which I like to... <laughs> oh, yeah. From Ohio originally, which I like to call the Thinky Man's Indiana. <laughs> and being from Ohio, half my family's from West Virginia. <laughs> and so... We drink Mountain Dew because we're like, that shit's for us. <laughs> like, the label had a hillbilly on it. Like, literally making fun of hillbillies. And we were like, they made it for us. Let's drink it up. <laughs> That's also how I knew, like, the pandemic wasn't going to go how, like, maybe everybody thought it was going to go, you know? Like, I believe that most people in this country did do as best they could. You know, like, I really, truly believe that. But I also was prepared for people to not want to do <laughs> what other people were telling them to do. <laughs> Being raised by, you know, West Virginia. When I was growing up, here's what some folks in my family would do. They would get a new to them vehicle. Now, notice I didn't say new car. New to them vehicle. A car that was not in the driveway the day before. <laughs> The first thing that they would do is go in the house, get a ratchet set from the, from the pile of ratchet sets from Harbor Freight. <laughs> and they would get in that car and they would take the seat belts out of that car. Because <laughs> they were just like, ain't nobody telling me how I'm gonna die. Absolutely not. If I wanna go through that windshield, I'm gonna go. I wanna die like a man. And that was the women, so come by this very honestly, you know? <laughs> so back to Top Gun. <laughs> I'm in the theater. I got my Mountain Dew. I got my medium popcorn, ready to get lost in the cinema. That movie comes on, and I cry. <laughs> From the beginning of Top Gun Maverick to the end of Top Gun Maverick. Not just the Val Kilmer stuff, the whole damn movie. And I cried from a new place. You ever cry from a new place where you're like, who is that? Why? <laughs> I can't stop. Filled up my little mask, you know? Had my own little navy in there, you know? Cried so much and went around the air loops. I was crying it out. I just didn't realize how much I needed to be loved by Tom Cruise and to love as Tom Cruise, you know? I just didn't know. And then I left and it hit me. I realized, now, you guys are pretty hip. <laughs> you guys are hip audience. But uh, if you don't know this, uh, trans folks like myself, if we decide that we want to seek any sort of medical gender affirming health care, uh, not only do we have to go see a doctor who, at this point, 10 times out of 10, is a cisgender person. Now, if you don't know what a cisgender person is, you're it. <laughs> That's how that works. It's really easy to remember. That's you. It's you. <laughs> also, not a slur, just a neutral statement of fact. <laughs> so, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go see a doctor, and then I also had to go talk to a therapist. Now, in my case, I had to talk to a therapist that I'd never spoken to before, and I haven't spoken to since. And this person was about five years younger than me. That means I had to get a permission slip from somebody I wouldn't have even gone to high school with <laughs> to get medical health care. And on top of that, sometimes people are like, oh, you're a guy now? Well, I guess you just joined up the patriarchy. And I'm like, I don't know that anybody got a permission slip to join up with the patriarchy. <laughs> I think they just kind of go do that. You know what I mean? So I say, instead of uh, you know, making us go through this whole bureaucratic medical rigmarole, at least for the trans mask folks of us, you know, on the, on the dude spectrum, just put us in a screening of Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> Turn that bad boy on. 
watch us cry our little eyes out. And just be like, that's a bunch of dudes. They're dudes. They knew. They know themselves. I should have trusted them. You know what I mean? They know. I don't need to tell them. They're crying. Looks like they're crying from a new place. That looks like a new cry. <laughs> I've been taking testosterone for about three years. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And yeah, a light, a light clapping and a couple woos. That's good. You know, usually people lift me up on their shoulders, carry me out into their street, <laughs> declare me the king or mayor, whatever they want to choose, you know? <laughs> it is also funny to cheer on somebody's medications, you know? It's like... Hey, I took two a leave tonight. Yay! <laughs> I, uh, I'm very grateful to take it. You know, it's been uh, three years, and uh, I would be lying if I didn't let you guys know that there was this little part of me. Now, did I think this? No. Intelligent, intellectually? No. <laughs> but was there this tiny little Jiminy Cricket in me that thought, that believed, if you will, I was gonna go get my testosterone, come home, take it, and then wake up like Tom Hanks in Big the next morning. <laughs> Tiny little bit, thought that was gonna happen. And then it didn't happen and I was like, that's why I watch this movie every day of my life. <laughs> just, just really wanted to be a 30 year old man ever since I was seven years old. Got it. And the facial hair, it really took its sweet time, you know? Felt like history's slowest werewolf for a while. <laughs> really. Did its own thing. And Mother Nature, it doesn't, it like takes its own time and it doesn't start, the hair doesn't start on the face. <laughs> no, no. It's not like, let's get you a mustache, bud. <laughs> no, no. No, 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 no. It goes, how about we start with back of the knee? Let's go back there. <laughs> <clears throat> you're not a gatherer anymore, you're a hunter. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's get you a full bush on the back of the knee. You gotta watch out for arrows now, so. You're not basket weaving, we gotta, we gotta protect you. <laughs> just goes back of the knee and then full ass, you know, just. It's like a Russian hat back there, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like I knew what y'all were dealing with, but I didn't know what y'all were dealing with. <laughs> it's also funny, too, because people are like, oh, you're so different. And I'm like, I get it. I am very different. But I'm still the same guy on the inside. I'm the same guy that I always has been, you know what I mean? It's just like a new... It's like I have a car, and I went and got it repainted. And people are like, great new car, man. And I'm like, no. I just went to Mako. <laughs> Same car, dude. <laughs> and if the car thing doesn't work for you, how about this? Okay. <clears throat> it's like I was a ratatouille. And <laughs> I'm in the hat, you know? And they just, they put me on a lady chef. And they're like, hey, you're a lady chef. And I'm like, well, I'm really just a ratatouille, you know? <laughs> I'm just trying to, I don't really know what that is, you know? I'm just here to make soup, you know? That's my life's purpose. I and mean, it's all just hair to me, so I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Sounds good. And then finally one day they put my ratatouille on a guy chef, and they're like, oh, this makes sense. And I'm like, I tried to tell you I'm just a ratatouille. <laughs> and I do want to say that is the universal trans experience, so. <laughs> we are all the same in that. <laughs> Analogy. Sometimes it takes me by surprise, though, you know, because I am just that same little ratatouille on the inside, you know? Um, <laughs> I called my friend recently, and I mean, that's how you know I'm 40 years old. I called my friend. <laughs> on top of calling my friend, I left them a voicemail. Oh, no! The horror! I can't believe that I'm old enough to be like, do you remember how it used to be? It's like, well, here we are, you know? But do you remember how it used to be? You could just be like, oh my God, I'm in, 
I'm in my friend's neighborhood. Oh, uh, maybe I'm kind of hungry. Maybe they'll want to go to lunch. And then you would just drive to their house and then you would get out of your car and you would walk on up to their door and you would knock on the door and they would be like, hey, it's so good to see you. And you'd be like, it's so good to see you. <laughs> if you did that now, people would be like, I'm going to kill you. Get away from me. Why are you here? The preferred behavior is, I'm leaving my house in 20. I'm 30 minutes away. I'm driving to you. I'm driving. I'm getting closer. <clears throat> I'm much closer. Five minutes out. Two minutes out. Just looking for parking. Trying to find parking. Circling for parking. Parking. I'm parking now. I'm parking. Got out of the car. Walking to your house. I'm walking down the sidewalk. I'm walking to your driveway. Should I go up the driveway? Should I go up to the driveway? First door, second door. First door, second door. <laughs> Should I touch the door? I'm touching the door. I'm here! That's, that's preferable behavior. <laughs> so I left my friend a voicemail. <laughs> I called, and you know she didn't pick up, so I left the voicemail. And I was like, hey, it's really good to see you the other night. Uh, it was really nice talking. Been too long, you know. I thought, oh, this is River, by the way. Um, I thought, you know, maybe if you want to grab coffee or get lunch or something, you know, I just give you a call. Be great to hang out, you know. And if not, totally cool. I'll see you around. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> she calls me back a couple hours later. And she's like, River! <laughs> you better watch it with that voice, boy. <laughs> It's like, I gotta let you know, things have changed. <laughs> I sexually harass all my male friends, so watch out. And I was like, thank you so much for seeing me. Please affirm me with your abuse. I'm a person who, I don't know if you guys, I feel like some of you can relate to this. Um, also, when I'm having a bad day, sometimes I like to just head into AutoZone just walk around you know sometimes I'm like does my car smell good enough anymore you understand like sometimes you just got to get into the zone the auto zone <laughs> now going in before I start taking testosterone I'm going in I'm going in with my with my tiny little teenager self you know my tiny little teen son lesbian son self you know, I look at old photos of myself and I'm like, I look like my own teenage son. <laughs> very, very strange. <laughs> and then I realized why people thought I was a teenager all of my life. Because like, if you're, if you're like on the mask spectrum in, uh, of lesbianism, you know, like you find yourself, you are literally a child to people, like everywhere you go. Like, I, I was 30 years old and I almost got arrested in the Las Vegas airport for taking a picture of a slot machine because the security guard did not think I was over 18 years old. <laughs> and I was a 30-year-old person. So I used to go into AutoZone and just get ignored because people were like, that is a child, but also an adult. I don't know what to do with that, you know? <laughs> But now I go into AutoZone with this, I walk in, I'm in like sweatpants or whatever, just, just trying to get in the zone, you know? <laughs> I walk in and a dude's like, what's up boss, how can I help you? I got a promotion at AutoZone. This is not cool. <laughs> Wasn't even trying for that, you know? One thing, I feel like, you know, I spent most of my life hanging out with dudes. I hang out with a lot of dudes, so I don't feel like I need, I don't need to learn much. It's not like I'm in some new thing or whatever. That's just my experience, you know? But I will say there's one area that I could use like a little afternoon class um, <laughs> from the cis guys. I could use like a little PDF from the cis guys. You could help me out with this. Um, and it's handshakes. Could you help me out with this? You guys have too many handshakes. I don't mean tell me how to do a handshake, please. I spent, 25 years as a butch lesbian shaking your hands. I know how to shake your hands. You guys are always trying to dead fish me. Just go like this all the time. Like, nobody wants to shake hands like this. I know how to shake hands. You gotta come in like this with the uppercut. You know? You gotta go through with the hips, you know? Handshake through the hips. Through the hips, you know? I don't mean a handshake. I mean all your little handshakes that you're doing all the time. You guys have all these crazy little handshakes. I didn't learn any of that. Nobody let me do any of that. I had to petty cake all the time. <laughs> I 
playing basketball. That's all we did was petty cake, petty cake, <laughs> two points, you know. I'm just kidding. We didn't really do that, but it would be funny if you did. The amount of times that I've shook hands with dudes like this. It's ridiculous. And honestly, as a former lesbian, not that weird. You know, pretty familiar. There were some things about me, you know, like I feel like as when I was a lesbian or thought I was a lesbian, people thought, I, you know, whatever. I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> there were things about me that, that when I was a lesbian, people thought it was cool, you know, like cool haircut, cool boots, you know, cool jacket. You look like you have axes at home, you know. You, know, you pull off camo and that's hard to do, you know, stuff like that. All that same stuff now as a guy, same stuff. People are like, where were you on January 6th? That's just curious. Just curious. <laughs> Dangerous ratatouille situation, you know what I mean? I'm like, I don't know, it's hard to do this joke because I flew here so I couldn't bring it, but I, you know, I always carry a pocket knife, you know, so you guys will have to follow my object work for this one, but <laughs> I think it's worth it, so. <laughs> so, as a lesbian, always carried a pocket knife, always had a little pocket knife with me, you know? As a lesbian with a pocket knife, people are like, cool, man. <laughs> you know your way around a blade, that's cool. <laughs> you like, protect yourself, you know? Take care of yourself, maybe you whittle, that's cool, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> but now, as a dude, I'm just a man on stage with a knife, and <laughs> nobody likes that, you know? <laughs> nobody likes or wants that. <laughs> Thank you. This little... <laughs> Years of improv training <laughs> for that one bit. <laughs> I also, you know, I try to look for the similarities and not the differences these days, you know? I don't know if you guys try to do that, but try to practice that. It's so much easier to find, you know, the differences in our lives. So I try to look for the similarities. Um, so here's a good one. Um, me and Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> have a lot in common, actually, you know? I don't know if you guys know this, but um, we both do stand-up comedy. Um, we both talk about trans people <laughs> a lot, like a lot, like all the time. <laughs> Just on and on and on, you know what I mean? <laughs> and we both take testosterone. We're basically the same guy. We're pretty much the same guy. Pretty much the same dude. <clears throat> I don't know if you guys, like, you guys probably, like I said, you guys are hip, you know? Um, but if you, you know, don't let the general population know about this. <laughs> if there's a kid in your life that you think, you know, oh, I think this kid might be trans, and you're, like, curious about it, you know, and you want to know in, in a genuine, loving, compassionate way, um, I can tell you the exact date when you can find that out. Like, that's how trans I am. It was like, and let you know the exact date. Can you believe that? Um, and that date is October 31st of any, <laughs> any year. <laughs> you just keep those eyes peeled, you know? Because <laughs> I was like thinking back to my first Halloween, you know, thinking back to the first one that I was like allowed to choose uh, my costume. And I think I was about four or five years old. Um, and I remember I went up to my mom and I was like, hey mom, good news. I know what I want to be for Halloween. And she was like, great, what do you want to be? And I was like, I would like to be Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, oh fun, like you want to be like Superman? And I was like, no, <laughs> nah. No, not interested in that. I, 
I would like to wear a suit. And she was like, yeah, like the super suit. And I was like, no, no, you misunderstand. <laughs> I would like to wear a nice tailored three-piece suit. <laughs> in a nice, nice professional brown wool. I would like some glasses and a hat and a job. <laughs> That's what I would like. <clears throat> I would also totally love to help out a lady every now and then. That would be a lot of fun. She doesn't even need to know it's me. <laughs> Honestly, I prefer it that way. <laughs> I think that's actually my gender, is just someone's boyfriend. You know, just, just... Who's that guy? I don't know. Somebody's boyfriend? He's just... Nice guy. He's just hanging out. Drives us to the mall, lets us listen to whatever we want. Because then I remember my costumes after that. So it's Clark Kent, and then the next one after that, I was one of the seven dwarves. <laughs> Which, that's just a little guy hanging out with a bunch of other little guys. <laughs> helping out a lady! <laughs> and then the costume after that, I was the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> that's a straw guy hanging out with a tin guy and a lion guy, helping out a lady! <laughs> Someone's boyfriend! Because <laughs> that's the thing, the call's coming from inside the house, you know? It was always there, you know? It's that new place, you know? So I feel like people think we're like, I'm, or like I'm going around, you know, like making people trans, you know, like knocking on doors and making people trans. And I'm not not doing that, but. <laughs> you know, I can't make anybody trans who isn't already trans. You know what I mean? I'm just going like, ding, it's in there, you know? <laughs> Because, like, I can remember, too, uh, my moment when I look back, I'm like, oh, there it was, you know? <laughs> and it was in 1989, I went to see the feature film, Back to the Future Part 2. <laughs> Has anybody, who's seen that movie? <laughs> Everybody. Everybody went to see it. I was seven years old in 1989, and I was in the middle of Ohio, and I went to see the movie Back to the Future Part Two. Now, that movie is the sequel to the huge cultural phenomenon, Back to the Future. Great film. Second one, okay. <laughs> Marty goes to the future, he tries not to mess around, but of course he does, because we need a plot. So then Marty goes back to 1985 and he thinks he goes back to the same 1985 that he left at the beginning of the film, but of course he did not. He messed around in the future, now everything's all messed up. And he's in an alternate 1985 where everything has gone whoopsie daisy and everything's bad, you know? His dad is dead and his mom has gotten remarried to the villain of the franchise, Biff Tannen, and they live in a casino. <laughs> and Marty wakes up in that casino to his mom, Lorraine Baines McFly Tannen having had a ridiculous boob job. Because it's 1989 and everybody's like, bimbos have boob jobs, or whatever. You know, like it was just like the funniest shit to people that somebody would ever have a, you know what I mean? And like, they're not even, they're, the, the boob job that they give her is like clearly just like styrofoam painted onto her body. Like it's so ridiculous, it's ludicrous looking. Like she looks like the front of a ship. Like it's not, it's not even like human or nice in any way, you know? And so, like, the whole thing is just, like, this joke of, like, how wild her boobs look, you know? And then cut to, Biff comes home, and Lorraine and Biff get in this big fight. And the crescendo of the fight is Lorraine Baines McFly Tannen saying to her now husband, Biff Tannen, you were the one who wanted me to get these things. Well, you want them back? You can have them. Seven years old, 1989, Akron, Ohio. I was like, you can do that? I didn't know. I had no idea. Sign me up. Ready to go. Get them out of here. I don't even have them yet. Like, get them out. Do I need, like, a receipt or something? Like, what do I need? Is there a 1-800 number for me to call? <laughs> like, I was ready to go. Do you think I was going to a bunch of drag shows in 1989? Absolutely not. 
That was Back to the Future Part 2. And Lorraine McFly is very straight. Like, she's so straight, she wanted to sleep with her son. That's very straight. I would say too straight. Hmm. I'm glad you guys like that. <laughs> so I have this friend. Um, she's a little bit older than me. She recently got divorced. Um, I'm also divorced. Anybody else divorced? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> wow. That's the most people I've ever had respond to the divorce joke. Because <laughs> I like bringing that up. You know, well, you'll find out why. But like, I bring it up. And I get such a wide range of responses to, is, I'm divorced, is anybody else divorced? Like one time somebody went, oh God! <laughs> I'm like, wow, the ink is not dry, okay. <laughs> Woo, okay. So sorry, buddy. <laughs> but it makes sense in Portland. I feel like it's all the 2015 gays that got married, you know? <laughs> With our little bow ties and our mason jars, and then. And then we were all like, what are we doing? We're gay. Why are we doing this? <laughs> now, this one's for me. Okay. What do you call a divorced lesbian? A trans guy. <laughs> okay, some of you are not on board. Now, I understand. You're calling me on my logic here, which I get. Now, setting aside the fact that a lesbian could and definitely will be married to a bisexual person, setting that aside for just one moment in the second half of this joke, I hear that you're calling me on the fact that typically a divorced lesbian would be two divorced lesbians. Right? Okay, so I'll give you a joke for the other one. So, okay, so what do you call the other divorced lesbian? Remarried. <laughs> That's... <laughs> Been doing that joke for a year. That joke applies to me and upwards of six other people. So it's pretty much a universal joke. <laughs> All right. So my my friend, she got divorced recently because um, she realized. Uh, you know, the pandemic revealed a lot to all of us. And she uh, realized that she was actually queer. And so she got divorced. And I, it was really fun for me to, like, be her friend through that, you know, and, like, be there with her, sort of be her, like, gay Sherpa. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, like, walking next to her. Like, I don't know, you know, it's like I've had my life experience that I can share. I don't, I'm not, I don't know more than you. You know, it's like your experience. But I just get to hold her hand, you know, while she gets her little toddler queer legs under her, you know? <laughs> And she just, you know, asks me questions every now and then, you know, like, oh, wow, they wear a lot of black, don't they? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, on certain nights in certain places, we do, yes. <laughs> and then I just give her Cheerios every now and then, you know. <laughs> Keep her little blood sugar up, you know. <laughs> but then they grow up so fast, you know, they grow up so fast. And she's just out there doing her thing, you know, and she's dating and doing all this stuff, and I'm really happy for her. And uh, uh, one night, you know, she's filling out all these dating apps. We all got really close, my partner and her and I, we got really close in the pandemic. Uh, we like to call ourselves a, a platonic thruple, um, <laughs> which most people would just call friendship, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we're queer, so we got to get real specific about the dynamics <laughs> and the attachment styles. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, what do you do? Like, light incense, pull cards, and lit crystals? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes there's a documentary on in the background. <laughs> so we got really close, you know? And uh, one night she was filling out um, this dating app while we were hanging out, and she was like, oh, you know, River, I was going to tell you about this one. I, was, I was started putting it together earlier, and I thought of you um, because of this app asks what your kinks are, you know, so that you can better match with people. And I was like, I wonder what River's kinks are. And then she was like, so, River, 
what's your kink? And I was like, um, uh, sex. <laughs> I don't know, I stand by that answer. <clears throat> sex is pretty kinky, you know? You take your shirts off sometimes. It's, it can be pretty wild. And I don't want anybody to think this is like a kink shaming joke or anything. You know what I mean? It's like, I am not yucking anybody's yum, you know? I, whatever you want to do, I'm not even going to qualify it with do whatever you want as long as nobody gets hurt. Do whatever you want. And if you want to get hurt, get fucking hurt. I don't care. <laughs> what am I, a cop, you know? What am I going to be, a trans cop? <laughs> I'm going to go through all this in my life to tell other people what to do? Please! Also, I like baseball. I shouldn't tell anybody what to like. I cry watching men in pajamas hit a ball with a bat. <laughs> My opinion doesn't matter, you know? Also, I'm a vanilla ally, you know? We don't really have a flag yet, you know? Because it'd just be like a white flag and that's very confusing to people. It's both full of and devoid of symbolism. It's confusing. <clears throat> so mostly I just wave a stick, you know. And then if you want that stick for your stuff, <laughs> go ahead, you know. I'm an ally. I'm an ally. <laughs> I don't know that we should use the word vanilla to describe non-kinky sex anymore, though. I don't know about that, because I, I think about words a lot, you know. Words are kind of my language, you know. <clears throat> So I think about them a lot. And, uh, you know, also just to have a, a little extra tangent, I um, think about words a lot, you know, and, and because of that, I was, I was thinking about phrases and this phrase like kind of came to me that I was like, oh man, I think we maybe need to update that. You know, like we maybe, we maybe need to update it, just add to it. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't like to get rid of anything really. You know, it's like matter is neither created nor destroyed. So <laughs> let's hang on to it, you know, but I just like, <clears throat> Let's like add something to it. And the, the phrase, it's because I don't hear it enough. You know, I don't hear it in, in the world enough. And I, I would love to hear it more, but I, I don't hear it enough. And that phrase is um, getting eaten out. I would love, I would love to hear it more. I just don't, maybe I need to live in Portland. I don't know. I just don't hear it enough. It's like, I want to walk down the street at brunch hour and just hear people. But I was getting eaten out the other night. You know, I just want to hear it. And I don't, you know, I don't hear it. But I do hear about blowjobs all the time, you know. On a spirit flight, blowjobs, you know? <laughs> Watching Back to the Future Part 2, blowjobs. It's like you can't get away from it. It's constant. So that's why I'm like, we need an update. We need an extra. We need another. We need a sort of spiritual partner to the ubiquitous blowjob for getting eaten out. And so it came to me. Here's my suggestion. Chow job. <laughs> yeah? All right. Okay. Kind of looks the same on paper, you know? It's only like one word will guess away. It's nice. You know, equal pay for equal work. This is a labor issue. <laughs> if you don't like chow job, you can just turn it into chowy, you know what I mean? And if you don't like it at all, you can just shorten it to CJ, you know? I was getting a CJ the other night, you know? And then that leads you right down the road to, I was under siege the other night. It's right there. It's all, I've got the whole family all laid out. So I don't think we should use vanilla to describe non-kinky sex anymore. And here, I'll tell you why. Because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but vanilla, you know, this thing that we think is like so boring and bland, um, actually comes from a flower that is technically an orchid. <laughs> Do you guys know that? <laughs> it's true. You ever have an orchid? It's a kinky-ass plant. You ever have one of those? One day they're like, make it hot. And then the next day they're like, ooh, I need steam. And they're like, ice cube, ice cube, ice cube. It's a lot. They know themselves, you know? But not only is it an orchid, it's, it's a very specific type of orchid that can only be pollinated one day out of the calendar year. And it can only be pollinated by one very specific type of bee. 
that we as humans have pushed to extinction, which means that all the vanilla that we say is so boring and bland comes from a plant that for 364 days of the year is surrounded by a team of scientists who are waiting for that orchid to turn to them and say, it's today. <laughs> And then the scientists take their shirts off. <laughs> and they have sex with that orchid. <laughs> and that's how we get vanilla. So. I think we need a new word. <laughs> it's not very boring. <laughs> I love pride, you know? I love it. I love that it's changing and growing. I love that we're like learning that like, oh, <laughs> Maybe Target isn't where we're going to be liberated. You know, like maybe... Maybe shopping is not where it's gonna happen. <laughs> and maybe inviting cops to Pride is a bad idea. Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps the people who cause the uprising are not the best folks to bring to the barbecue, you know? <laughs> I love that that's happening. Um, one thing, one other thing that I don't love uh, about Pride is the internal discourse around Pride and it keeps happening every year and now it's happening outside of, you know, it's sort of gotten out into the general population and I don't like that every year somebody's gotta be like, no kink at Pride! There's kids there! There's families there! You know? Because what I've realized is what that person really wants to say is, no kink at Pride! There's straight people here. <laughs> Don't scare them away. Don't freak them out. We need their votes, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I just, uh, no, you know? I don't, I fully disagree. Cause like the only thing that's not allowed at Pride is what? Cops, Cops that's right, great job. <laughs> and what are you when you start telling people who can and cannot be somewhere? Cops. That's right. <laughs> So I offer this to anybody that's like, yeah, maybe we should get rid of King Get Pride, you know? Or if you know people that agree with that view and you like want to convince them otherwise, I offer you this. Between the kids at Pride and the kinksters at Pride, which one do you think is pretending to be a dog more often? <laughs> it's the kids, y'all, it's the kids. The call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> now, I know that's a great joke because it got me cut out of a stand-up special on a major streamer. Because <laughs> I think they thought it was like too grooming adjacent or something, and I'm like, look, no, absolutely not. Look, grooming is not taking a kid to one thing once a year in a very specific month. Grooming is what the Catholic Church does every day of the week. Yeah. <laughs> or the Boy Scouts, or mega churches, or evangelical. <laughs> other tax-exempt organization, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so this story takes place uh, in the era of the pandemic um, when we as people decided that the best way to support healthcare workers was not <laughs> by giving them money or supporting them with any sort of workforce, you know, as a sort of like extra boost or literally any sort of infrastructure whatsoever. No, the best way to support them was to hang out of our houses and bang pots and pans together. That's how collectively we decided to process our trauma <clears throat> and express gratitude. And we don't know how to do that in this country. You know, we have one holiday for gratitude and it's based on genocide, so we really don't know how to do it, you know? We don't know. Not starting out on the right foot, you know? Starting out on the white foot, and that's the problem. So... <laughs> so this is the era that that is. I got an email uh, to my house. <laughs> they sent me the email. And um, 
sent it right to me, and my mailman dropped it off. <laughs> Mail carrier, excuse me. <laughs> now, I got this email um, from my old neighborhood. I just happened to, in Los Angeles, move into a very quaint neighborhood. I moved into an apartment that happened to be situated in like a nice little neighborhood. I had no idea moving in. It was just a bonus to me, you know? Um, and they would have like block parties and stuff. It was really fun. And most of the parties were thrown by this gay male couple, uh, Matthew and Doug, um, who would have these like really fun Christmas parties where people would just come over all day, you know? Um, and they got a little internet fan famous a couple years ago for having a two Joseph nativity. <laughs> Some Catholic priests got real upset about that. <laughs> to which I said, maybe check out your own manger and what's going on in there <laughs> before you worry about this guy's yard and some plastic figurines in it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take that plank out of your eye, <laughs> you know? But I like to think about Matthew going down to the Home Depot to get the second Joseph, you know? <laughs> And then coming home, kicking Mary to the curb and <laughs> being like, your job here is done. <laughs> oh, don't worry about her. Her resume is immaculate. <laughs> <laughs> so Matthew sent us this email uh, early on in the pandemic um, that said, great news, everyone. Fireworks for the healthcare workers is on for Tuesday. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about Southern California, but it's on fire 99% of the time. Mostly because of fireworks. All the other times is because of gender reveal parties. Where for some reason, heterosexuals sacrifice their parents in a blaze of fire to let everybody know the upcoming gender of their child. To which I say, for now. <laughs> probably gonna change <laughs> so I was like I don't you know I don't even live there I don't want to go to this I don't I don't think it's a great idea you know I should probably let him know that I don't live there anymore and before I could even type out the email I got another email from Matthew that was like bad news everyone <laughs> fireworks for the healthcare workers has been canceled someone parentheses Melinda <laughs> notified the authorities and my fireworks have been confiscated. And at this moment I was like, I am an unemployed stand-up comedian in a once in a hundred year global pandemic. I'm gonna stick around and see what develops, you know? Let's see how this thing rolls out. So new email comes in, this time it's from Melinda. Ooh, exciting. Plot thickens. Melinda's like, hi, Matthew. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, Kristen and I were outside gardening, and some people walked by, and they seemed very interested in your party, and we assumed they genuinely wanted to go, and we think it was them that called the police on you, because that's not anything that Kristen or I would do to you guys or our neighbors. We would never call the cops on our neighbors for something as trivial as this. I'm so sorry to hear this, and I, I think it was just a misunderstanding. And I'm like, certainly. It was just a misunderstanding. <laughs> Clearly, this is the end of it. But I also realized in that moment that what we have in front of us is a classic lesbian versus gay men fight. <laughs> Been going on for millennia. And it took that day for me to realize I've found my kink. Oh, I just I really love it, you know? It just really enhances everything, you know? It's like, just as a bisexual, transsexual, just put me in the middle, you know, and just fight over me, you know? Just fight over me. Just mommy and daddy yelling. I love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I know you'll save each other's lives eventually, but fight it out now. Oh. Give it to me, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, certainly this is a misunderstanding. No, no. Matthew comes in hot again. And he says, give me a break, Melinda. You and Kristen have always had it up for me and Doug and our parties. 
<laughs> You've never been very supportive. You always come late, leave early. You don't even try our dips. <laughs> Yikes. Ouch. <laughs> now, at this point, the thread goes quiet for a little while. And I also want to let you all know that this is not like a six-person email chain. This is like an 80-person email chain. So like 78 people are watching an email thread in front of their eyes because we got nothing else to do. <laughs> so a couple hours go by and then I get the notification. I got them all lit up on my phone. I get the little buzz in my phone. I don't open that email on my phone. Absolutely not. This is a computer email. I want to sit down. I want to light a candle. You know, I want to have a snack, water, and a seltzer, just in case. Salty and sweet, you know? I want to, I want, I'm prepared, you know? <laughs> so I open up that email, and it's the email we've all been waiting for. <laughs> this one's from Kristen. Oh, yeah. Now this one just starts out simply Matthew dash. Oh, great opener, Kristen. I love it. <clears throat> Woo, yes. Mm, strong. Mm, yes. Strong gardening hands type that. <laughs> and I gotta say, look, I wanna pretend like I'm neutral, but <laughs> you gotta dance with who brought you. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for the lesbians in this one. I love you all, you're my family, but let's go Dykes, you know? <laughs> so she starts off, Matthew Dash, new paragraph. I do not appreciate the way you are speaking to my wife. Ah, mommy, you know? Ooh, yes. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I echo everything my wife Melinda said. This is nothing we would ever call the police on our neighbors for. And please, Matthew, don't be ridiculous. We love your parties. We're not jealous of them. We appreciate them. We think they're integral to the fabric of this community in this neighborhood. We enjoy your parties. We love them. And we even enjoy the dips. <laughs> New paragraph. <laughs> it took me a while to get back to you. Because as you know, Matthew, I was working a double overnight shift. <laughs> At the children's hospital. The sisters of Belitis right again, you know what I mean? It's a very deep cut. And I'm like, certainly it's over, you know? Great job, Kristen. Great job, Melinda. It's a great match. Everybody played pretty fair. Bing! Nope. New email from Matthew. Matthew says, oh, please, Kristen. Sure, yeah. You were working at the children's hospital, but it's not like you were on the front lines or anything. All you are is a child anesthesiologist. Ex excuse me? I'm sorry, what? The gentleman who wanted to do fireworks for the healthcare workers is upset that you're just a child anesthesiologist? Is it perhaps factually true that as a child anesthesiologist, she was not working on the front lines on a once in a hundred year global pandemic? Sure, she's simply working behind the front lines as a child anesthesiologist. All she's doing is, is, is holding the life force of a child in her strong gardening hands. <laughs> and 
and shepherding that child into a sort of nether realm, an ethereal plane. One that we cannot reach through meditation, contemplation, or a combination of street drugs. <laughs> holding that child in that balance, holding their delicate life in her hands as other doctors open that child up, move things around, take things out, put new things in, and then Kristen raises that child up <laughs> back to the earthly plane. And that's not good enough for a bottle rocket from Matthew. <laughs> but it did get me off, so I really appreciate her service. Like I said, we have a gratitude problem in this country, but I am very grateful that you all came here tonight. Thanks so much for coming out. I really appreciate you all. Have a beautiful night. I love you.